Hi, I'm Lisa. Welcome to my glass studio. One of the really exciting things about glass fusing is the number of different types of materials that you can use to create your projects and your designs. I'd like to show you some of the fun material that I get to work with on a daily basis to make projects like this and projects like this and like this beautiful sunset and these exotic tropical fish. Ooh, isn't that fun? So when I'm getting ready to make a project, I usually start with, you know, a design idea. What's the pattern going to look like? What's this, the theme or subject matter for my piece? And then I decide what colors I want to use and what type of material. Well, let, let me move some of this stuff out of the way. And the first thing I generally will go towards for is my glass. Glass comes in the sheet form. The glass has the color in it when you buy it. The glass, the colors are made with metals and materials mixed in with sand and then heated and then they pour it out and they create these awesome sheets. So we have a wide variety of colors and different styles to work with. One of the styles that we have to work with is called opalescent glass. And these are examples of opal glass. Opal means that it has white in it and you generally can't see through it. If I put my hand behind here, you can't see it. If I put this little fish back here, you can't see it. So you don't really see through the glass, but if you hold it up to the light, you do get a nice sense of the color. It glows and it, light will reflect off the surface of it. But because it has white in it, you generally don't see it, see through it. And you generally have a really nice, strong concentration of color. Now, opal glasses can be solid like these, like a solid, this is called um, peacock opal. And this one is like a soft mauve. They can be solid or they can sometimes be um, variate, variegated, striated, whatever you want to call it, mixes of colors. So this is a blue and white combination, and this is a gray and black and white combination. So it's really a black and white and where they mix, you get a gray. Both of these colors are also considered opalescent or opals because they have white in them and you really don't see through them very well. So, but if you hold this up to the light, the light does glow through it. It does illuminate the material, make it look pretty. And the light also reflects off it with a, you know, gives you a lovely shine. So those are two different types of glass. We also have, let's see, go here. We have wispy glass. Wispy glass. Let me move some of these out of the way. There we go. Wispy or streaky will have a color and clear mixed together. So in some areas you get a strong saturation of color. In other areas you get a sense of transparency. When the light goes through this, it's really beautiful. And depending upon you know, how thick the coloring is or how much material there is in there, we determine how translucent it is and how much light will go through the glass. These materials right here show beautifully in the light. You'll notice if I put my hand behind there, you can probably see a little bit of a shadow back there of my hand because of those transparent areas. But when you hold it up to the light, it really glows. You get kind of a sun, sunshiny look through it. So when I'm making my projects, I pick the material based on what type of look I want. Like this would be great material for flower petals because they wouldn't be solid and they'd have this really nice variegated area to them. And it goes from yellow to orange to clear, which is really pretty. This would make, oh, I almost knocked that over. <laughs> this would make great leaves because of the variation there. Much prettier than just a solid flat green. Now there are times when I would pick a solid flat green like an apple green, but there's other times when this would be my choice. Now there's also transparent glass, which is also called cathedral glass, and it's consistent with what you might expect to find in church windows. That's why it's called cathedral. It has color, but it's transparent. There's no white. So opal has white and is solid. You can't really see through it too easily. Transparent cathedral has no white in it, and all you have is clear glass and the color. Now the color goes all the way through the glass. It's, um, it's not painted on like you might think it's not stained glass. The color is all the way through the material and the color is made by adding different metals and minerals to a mix that then give you the colors. For example, uh, pink and red and really pretty colors are made with gold. Well, other materials and other colors are made with other metals and materials and minerals. So it's really pretty fascinating. Now I am not a chemist, I am not a scientist. I am an artist who loves working with glass. So I know enough about those things to know what I like to use and when I want to use them, but not enough to really be able to give you the science behind it. So I'm sure there's areas where you can research that and find out that information for yourself. 
So that's kind of a rundown on the sheet glass that I have to choose from when I decide to start building a project. Another material, this is a specialty glass called Fuser's Reserve. It has purple and blue and white and this crazy random pattern that swirls through it. It's just beautiful. It's mostly white on the back. It has a um, medium amount of transparency. Light goes through it where you have the the wider areas, kind of like uh, going through like a, a light milk or milk and water. And then other areas, it's more solid and the light doesn't go through. So it gives you a really nice variation of pattern within a, a single project. So it's really cool stuff to work with. It's also very fun if you're working with this one to maybe introduce some purple or blue or white as your accent colors in your design to pull out those colors. So if I were using this, on a project, I would probably accentuate it, complement it with some of the colors that are in that glass. Another material that's fun to work with is iridized glass. This glass, it's black glass with an iridescent coating on it. Now this, the coating is a very thin film on the surface and it gives it a mother of pearl look. The beautiful thing about this is if you put it next to a green, it kind of gets, it turns a little green. You put it next to a blue, it kind of pulls out blues. Next to an orange, or this yellow, let's try the yellow. See how it gets, kind of picks up some of the yellow. The cool thing about iridized glass is when you cut it up and put it back together in a single project, each piece looks a little different next to each other. It has a, like a, a black velvet kind of sheen to it that's really beautiful. So iridized comes, this is, as I said, a black glass. It also comes on colored glass. It comes on red and blue and different things like that. So it's a nice complement to your piece of art. Most of the time the iridized will, uh, the fused art will retain that iridized coating. And so that's really a nice additional aspect or detail that you can add to your art when you're building something. Here's an example of using iridized black on a project to really enhance the artwork. So the iridized black is used here around the perimeter and notice how it reflects all these different colors and it will pick up like this, this right here is picking up kind of the green color next to it. This is picking up kind of the blue next to it. It picks up this yellow over here around the perimeter. So it really gives a beautiful complement, nice sheen to the artwork that makes it different than using just regular glass. Now here's a great example of transparent material right here, transparent glass in use. This is a great example of the opalescent or opal glass being used. This is also opal out here around the perimeter. Here's the iridized black on the interior and notice that little black rim around it. When the glass melts down, it creates a little halo around the pieces, which gives you added detail. It looks like a little um, outline around the pieces. So that can be really fun. Another material that I loved, oh, well, before we move on, let's talk about um, the Fuser's Reserve. This is a great example of the Fuser's Reserve being used in a piece of art as to create a really whimsical background with a lot of movement and activity. So this glass works really nicely to um, give you a lot of detail, design detail, without having to cut a lot of pieces. So you let the glass do the work for you and give you that sense of movement. While we're talking about this, right here, this piece right here and this piece right here, that's called a fire stick and it's made out of dichroic glass. Dichroic glass is one of my favorite glasses. So dichroic glass is glass with a fusible glass with a very thin coating on it. It's a um, space age technology type of coating and it looks like this. Now it can have a pattern. It can be, um, a, you know, can be patterned like this. It can be a solid color, it can be a blue, it can be a green, it can be transparent. It can be, you know, any number of exciting things. So the, the beauty of the dichroic is that it has a reflective quality that um, gives you three different colors. Uh, so when you look at it, you get one color. When the reflected color is a second color, and then the color that goes through it is a third color. So you get a lot of a lot of beautiful shine from it. So right here is an example of using this particular type of glass on a piece of art and how it really accentuates and adds nice detail and, and features to the piece of art. Right here is an example of using the fire sticks right there and how beautiful those are and adding to the detail. Here's an example of opal glass 
versus transparent glass, opal, transparent. You can see how in this project they look different as the light goes through them and they give you different ref reflective qualities. Um, so here's one of the fire sticks before it's been fired. Isn't that fun? This is a piece of dichroic. Now the dichroic is a fusible material. It retains its high polish and shine and color after it's fired. And as you can see, it adds a really nice detail to your work. Now dichroic can come in you know, the sheet form. It can come cut like this, the little fire sticks. You can also get it in the frit form, which we haven't talked about frit yet. But frit is basically ground up glass that we use for creating details and design elements and design, um, you know, filling out a design, creating a pattern or something like that. Frit is fusible glass that has been ground up into five different grades and you can use it on projects to create different design details. It comes in powder form, which looks like this. It comes in fine. Uh, here we go, we have uh, medium, coarse, and mosaic. Now, this makes great design details. Right here, I use Frit to create these kind of whimsical lines, these ribbons in the design. On this piece, I used powder frit to create a sunset. So you can, you know, use it to create your entire design if you'd like to. You apply it with a sifter and you wear a dust mask and you apply the frit and then after you fire it, you get this beautiful design detail. Uh, another way to use frit would be for accents. Here, these yellow pieces are coarse size frit. Over here in this, these green details and this coral, that's powder frit. And over here, I use powder frit on top of red powder frit on top of orange, and I draw through it with a pencil to create this design for this brain coral. So it's a very versatile material. You can use it to create a background. You can use it to create shading. You can use it just to add more detail and design to things. You can make an entire project just out of frit if you wanted to. So it's really a cool material. And very, as I said, all of these materials are so fun to work with. And when you combine them, you know, the opaque and the transparent and the dichroic and the frit and all that, you can really come up with some amazing and unlimited design ideas. Another fusible material that's a lot of fun to work with is Murini and Twisted Cane. Twisted Cane are pieces of glass that have some clear glass and then a color that kind of spirals through it and they come in these nine inch pieces. You just cut them with a regular glass cutter and work them into different you know, patterns or designs to create extra detail. So if you look at this fish right here, get a nice close up of that, you can see the twisted cane right here, right here, right here, and it adds, well, there's a pretty green, and green, two shades of green on clear. Here's a purple one right here. It adds, this is a green and yellow one here, adds nice detail. And then these other shiny pieces, that's the dichroic in action. And here's the transparent glass and opal glass. So this has a nice combination of a variety of materials. Here's another example. Oh, let me talk about the Murini. Murini are rods of glass with a pattern inside. Can you see that? Inside the glass, there's a little design, a little pattern that goes through the entire rod. And you cut those into little bits and then use them this way to create design detail, almost little flowers on your artwork. And right here is an example, I'm going to move some of the stuff out of the way. Right here is an example of the Murini creating a design here. Here's the twisted cane. So more twisted cane here, more twisted cane here. But you can see that all of these little additions, these little patterns, these little um, design details can really make a piece of art exceptional. So don't hesitate to try some of these materials. You can get them from your art glass supplier. They come in, uh, we work with two different types of, most for the most part, two types of COE, uh, 90 COE and 96 COE. Most of these materials are available in both of those families of material. Got lots of different things uh, to work with. So, you know, give some of these things a try. Maybe you haven't tried iridized. Maybe you haven't tried dichroic. Maybe you haven't tried the twisted cane or Or you're not, you never really knew opal or transparent were. What's the difference? Well, now you know. So when you pick those pieces, you can kind of be educated and a little more artistic in your application and how you apply those pieces to make your new artwork. 
Another great fusible component you might like to use are called noodles. Noodles are pieces of glass that are like the size and shape of a spaghetti noodle. And they're great for getting really strong linear quality in your design. Right here, I use noodles to create these nice strong colors right across the design here that break it up and complement the piece and really look nice in there. Uh, stringers are like little skinny pieces of, uh, of glass and they come in different colors and you can just kind of break them to size and you could use them in a design like this where they are kind of a focal point, add an extra detail in the foreground of a landscape, We're creating these kind of grass looking pieces with the, these um, stringers. Or you could use them, um, I, like I've used them here, for extra color and nice strong color saturation in a very linear quality here. Or you can you know, bulk them up and use a bunch of them and do something like this and spell out a word with them. So here, because this piece was, uh, you know, for the fall, I thought these kind of resembled branches. So I thought all those different colors together made a really nice effect and a really fast and easy way to do lettering in your fused glass. Another great component are fusible nuggets. Now you have to make sure you use fusible ones that are compatible with the materials you're using. But these little guys are called pebbles. They come in different colors. They come in a bag where they have a variety of colors. Or you can get them in a single color, like a bag of white or a bag of black. These are fun. You, you could put these together and make the center of a flower. You could put these together and make a border or something on your artwork. Or if you added a little bit of dichroic to them, you could use them for really fun eyeballs. So they're little nuggets or pebbles that are already made for you that are fusible components you can add to your other pieces of work to make it really new and exciting. Thanks for joining me here in the studio today. I hope you enjoyed all this, this uh, kind of background into materials. You know, a lot of times I've been working with glass for a long time and I know a lot of you have been doing it a long time, but maybe some of these terms aren't familiar. Maybe you're new to it and you know, some of these terms are foreign to you and it's kind of fun to get a rundown on the specifics and um, you know, what we call these different materials and why we might use one over the other, depending upon what type of design we're doing and what our end result is and what our, we want our finished project to achieve. You know, whether it's a piece of art, whether it's something that functions, whatever. Anyway, thanks for joining me. Uh, please follow and subscribe to my YouTube channel. Would love for you to do that. When you do it, then you'll get uh, notifications whenever my new videos come out, which they are coming out all the time. Please consider becoming a premium video member. We'd love to have you. You get exclusive content, uh, these full length courses, project courses, step by step video instruction, full size printable pattern ebook with patterns, images, materialists, and my custom firing guides. So, we'd love to have you. And until next time, happy fusing!